In this stage, we're going to look at the ceramic build-up technique onto the coping that's been produced. So there are several different techniques that you can use for building up the ceramics. We're going to use the most basic technique, so we're going to use only two of the available ceramics. We're going to use the base dentine, which provides the, uh, the bulk colour. We're not going to use the dentine, which has just been removed. And we're going to use the enamel um, dentine on the top. This is the modelling fluid that they're all mixed with. So we're going to take some of the base dentine, this will be um, labelled 3M2 or whichever shade you're going to use. It's coloured pink uh, with some food dye, just so you can differentiate between the, um, the ceramics when they're in the palette at this stage. It's mixed with the modelling fluid, just a small amount, that's small amount. Uh, a little, little too much. And then when we're mixing ceramics in the palette, we use a special, a special instrument, not any old lacron, because we don't want to get metals in this uh, material, uh, which would discolour it on firing. So we either use a glass rod or one of these special ceramic um, uh, instruments. Because I've put a bit too much liquid in, I'm just going to blot some of the excess out. What we don't do is just keep adding more and more of the powders. They're ridiculously expensive, these materials. So we just blot out the excess, and we're trying to get the consistency sort of, of wet sand, really. Um, just like you would when you're building your sand castle. You don't want it too wet, otherwise it just slumps um, too dry, and it always falls apart. It's the same principle with, the, with these materials. So a little bit more moisture taken out and we should be just about there that we can pile the material up and it stays in shape. Okay, so to position these ceramics then we're going to use a, um, a sable brush. We use this in two modes. First of all you saturate the brush with water, get all the air out, pull it back on a piece of tissue while twisting at the same time you get a nice point like that, or as I refer to it in crystals, a beautiful fox's tail mode. Okay, so that's the first mode that you use for your brush. The second one, establish your fox's tail in between the fingers, pull back, little flat smoothie outy instrument you've got there now. We would call it Otter's Paw. So, with your pointy mode then, fox's tail mode, pick up some of the ceramic, the wet sand, place it on your substructure, and that can be used just to position the, the ceramics in the right place. So, we're not using the brush as a, a reservoir to hold all the um, material like you would with paints, we're just using it to pick the ceramics up. So you've got your tissue behind there, haven't you, to, um, to pull the water out of the um, ceramic once you've placed it onto the dye, which helps it stick into place and it won't slump off. And it's quite important to keep the ceramic um, powder and liquid mixture condensed. And that can either be by vibration, you might see some people with a corrugated tool on their lacrons rubbing the model, um, or you can um, just put tissue behind it. The more you condense the ceramic, uh, the more um, you will stop the shrinkage upon firing, um, because you will have to overbuild this for shrinkage, it's quite important. So, another bit of ceramic, ceramic going onto the labial surface, just positioning it around, smoothing it out, blotting the moisture out all the time, See, just picking ceramic up again, positioning. It's all fox's tail for this bit, isn't it? All fox's tail action. And then, and then, and there we go. Pour there. Sneakily into Otter's yep. pour for smoothing out. Again, taking some tissue, getting the excess moisture out of the ceramic. That will stabilise it on the substructure, so it's not going to start um, slumping as you turn the model. This is the most basic technique we're using, so we're just using the base dentine to build up to full contour and then we're going to cut back and apply some enamel shade uh, as a ledge and we'll try and create some enamelons in the, in the uh, labial surface as well, just to give a little bit of detail. When you look at the ceramics kit you'll see that there's a whole range of different ceramics we can build in, varying in translucency and colour so we can put different um, ceramics around the margin, we can use internal colours to create enamel cracks and so on. Um, the, the 
dentine shade, this is the base dentine, the dentine shade to have a transition between the translucencies as well. So this is the cutback stage, isn't it, that you just alluded to a minute ago. So you're now putting, um, you're taking away the material where you would like the enamel, the more translucent areas, to, um, to be placed in the end. So by scratching a couple of grooves into the surface of the incisor, we will be able to put uh, the effect of mammalons, the, the sort of dentine fronds through the tooth. Yeah, so we're trying to leave, leave the mammalons, create some translucency in between them. A bit of fox's tail to smooth it out. Define them a little, straight into otter's paw, smoothen out any bits that have. That's a bit of a hybrid there, it's more of a fox's paw that one. There we go. As you can see, it's much larger than you would really want the final tooth. You, you've overbuilt it for the shrinkage then. There's a still of it. So the enamel powders are mixed in exactly the same way, keep them in a separate compartment in your palette. If the um, ceramics have dried out a little, you might want to add a small amount of moisture and that allows the two um, ceramic powders, the two different ceramic powders to blend. If, if it's too dry, it'll just sort of ball up on the surface of the, of the dentine and won't, won't blend together nicely. So you can see now the contrast between the colours allows you to see where you've placed the enamel powders in comparison to the dentine. We're just speeding up a bit here. Nothing new, is there? No new techniques. No. Same brush technique, same powder. Just restoring the, the contour again now. Finishing off. Making sure that it's nicely dried out, all the ceramics are nicely condensed. Taking any any powders which have gone to the adjacent teeth away, blotting out, and that should be just about it. And at this point is the worrying point because we have to uh, remove the dye from the model so that you can do the uh, the contact points. Because where you've built it from the front and the back, you're going to get a void where the contact points were. So the next stage is to take the model out of the dye and um, and have a look at what you need to patch up. So you can see the void there on the on the distal aspect of the tooth. Just going to take a small, um, take the brush and, and with it slightly moist, just blend all the bits together before adding some more powders into those areas. Again, this is a bit tedious, so we've sped it up, smoothed off, condensed. Same for the other side. Smoothing off, condensing, tidying up just around the margin to make sure it's not coming over the edge. And then you've got to very gently grab it at the contact point and place it onto the platinum pin. There it is. Dropping it at this point is not a good idea, is it? <laughs> okay, so you can see the two materials there quite nicely. Porcelain furnace again. This goes into a, a firing cycle, fires at about 920 degrees, comes out looking something like this. You can see all the particles have sintered together now. We've got a nice dense uh, ceramic now. But the surface is slightly orange peak, isn't it? Yeah. It always goes sort of slightly rough, so you need to grind that back. Of course, because we've overbuilt this the ceramics to start with, we're never going to get this right first time. So we're going to now trim any excess that we've got, um, put them a nice surface finish on the restoration, look for any areas where we might want some additional ceramics put in on, uh, and then we can uh, do that and refire any, any additions on. It is unusual to do it in one go, isn't it? It is. Very Even unusual. Sort of good technicians have a couple of firings. Yeah. So here I've, I've ground all of the surface and now I'm just checking the uh, mesial and distal and the incisal edge, which I'm sort of happy with there. When I look at the labial surface, it looks like it's just a little bit too bulky. And it just wants a bit off the mesial side of it, uh, sorry, the distal side of it, just to angle that labial surface a bit. So I'm just going to take the diamond burr and shave that a little bit more, just to make the incisal edge go around the arch a little more rather than being like a piano key. A bit of moisture. Uh, on the surface of the ceramic gives you the, 
what, what it's going to look like finally. I needed a little bit more on the palatal surface so we can add on in some dentine shades here and this can go into the furnace and have an additional firing. The additional firing is at a slightly lower temperature isn't it so that the main crown won't slump when it's uh, refired. Make okay. sure it's nicely condensed. That would be refired okay. until you've got a, uh, a, a, a crown at the shape that you want. Yeah. Job done. Excellent.